why NBA 2K14 was a generational game. Graphics wise, some people still believe that this is the best looking 2K game to come out and look look at the lighting. The it really is. Um, this is by far like the funnest time and best graphical time of 2K ever. Nothing is beating this era uh, of 14, 15, and 16, and 17. Yeah. The colors, like it, everything just pops. It looks real. Though the player models have gotten better throughout the years, the one thing that holds the newer games back is how flat it looks. Like everything looks like it has like a matte finish to it. Like I think that's what it is I, w w with the graphics. It's like it's like that matte finish. Like it looks very plain. It looks very uh, I don't know. I can't explain it. It just doesn't look good. Like it looks realistic but dull at the same time. But like dull. I said before, the player models have gotten way better overall. Like for example, if you look at 85, 86 Jordan, they got it spot on. But if you look at the 2K14 version, he looks crazy. You see mm -hmm. what they did? They took the old Michael Jordan model and put a hair piece on it. But I don't know <laughs> why they couldn't just like get some more natural looking hair. Cause like this, this look like straight enhancements. Whoa. He got the Carlos Boozer. And then there's some other player models, which they, they, they could have did a little bit more with, you know, like Jeff Green. That's not Jeff Jesus. Green. Come on now. But that then of like course, Williams. there are certain players where it's just spot on. Like, yeah, like Harden looked Thomas good. Or Braun, D-Wade, Lakers, Shaq, which interestingly enough, for some reason in 2K15, they just use old Shaq. Whoa, man. Look at the difference. Look at that. What? How, how how did you go from this to that? Whoa. And when I say old Shaq, I mean like Shaq right now. They scanned Shaq right now and put him into the game. <laughs> I don't know how the player model <laughs> dropped off like this, but this is crazy. But even with some of the more questionable player models in the game, the thing that ties everything to that Shaq right there looks pretty good. Not really good, but it looks good. Together is the lighting, the colors, the skin tones. Yeah, everything. It's just... The gameplay in this game feels very free flowing. Like there's not too many animations you can really get magnetized. Look at into this, on both man. Offense and defense. Look For at example, the fluidity. Somebody, Look don't at the feel fluidness. Like oh my down god, bro. Into like a little off arm battle. Like animations do exist when you engage the defender and you into them or you're trying to get past them, but it's not too exaggerated if that makes sense. Getting into oh more of the specific god, features they dude. added, you can actually block dunks in this game. When you do block a shot, it goes flying. Oh, yeah. it's, it's disrespectful how how hard they be punching the ball. Like if you don't jump towards the defender sometimes it's as if you're not contesting at all. like you just can't hold up the right stick if you really want a good contest and to balance yeah. this out they don't really call as many shooting fouls but the shooting in this game is it did something this might be my biggest issue with the gameplay and it's mainly that you can miss greens in this game like I mean, that's not a problem, man. That, to, to me, that's not a problem missing greens or uh, making uh, reds or whatever it is. Honestly, like that shot timing stuff should be off to me. I like playing without it on. So <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I don't even like playing with it on. It, it just kind of throws the game off. It throws the realistic of the game off like the gameplay like what i'm trying to get to like I've, I've missed a lot of excellent releases a, a lot of excellent releases like i get That's RL, fine. you know you can shoot the ball it can feel good it can look good but it can still miss i get that but like at the same time though like if i'm wide open with steph curry and i get an excellent release you know what i mean like i feel like it should go in i've had <laughs> shots miss yeah even if they have a a grade I feel you. for shot quality as well which i'm not too sure how much that plays into the release but like i said before i missed them anyway so i, I truly don't know but yeah there'll just be shooters in this game with really good shooting ratings uh signature skills i'm timing their release up and they just they just start breaking like i like one of the worst performances i've ever had in this game was using john starks and he has like a 94 open three but Whoa. at the same time i feel like i've had really good shooting games Man, look at that that UI. Jesus, dude. What a time. And that time is long gone. It's literally 10 years 
into NBA 2K and it just got worse over time. Can't believe it. It's it's impossible. Games with Gerald Green and Avery Bradley, even though they have lower three point ratings, little to no shooting signature skills. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I just had some lucky stretches with those types of players. But this is undeniable though. You see this right. That's 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 excellent. That's that's wide open. Maybe it's because of the Hall of Fame difficulty that throws the shooting yeah. out back a little bit. But regardless, yeah. missing can't make everything will always be outrageous. I'm, I'm sorry. But speaking of signature no. skills though, they I don't agree with him there. It's, uh, I mean, just take off the shot meter and take off the timing and, you know, you're playing a real game. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You're going to, you're not going to make 19 for 19 shots, you know, you're going to miss some. They make a return and they work the same way they did in 2K13. Unfortunately, they took away the descriptions in terms of actually telling you like the exact percentages of which each skill. See, all right, you see like how the skill is? That right there is perfect. With all of these badges that they got now, instead of skill, it ruins the game. You have so many things just going into that one player that it's just going to ruin it. This right here, where you just had Dimer, uh, let's say uh, Pickpocket, Pick and Roll Maestro, Lockdown Defender, and a couple of other like, look, he's got like nine sign signature skills. That's perfect, man. There's not much more you want in the game. Skill affects whatever attributes on the player, at least in the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game. The PS3 and 360 versions still tell you everything though. They also added a couple new skills this time around, like pick and roll maestro, tenacious rebounder, and one man fast break, just to name a few. But the main one I want to highlight is the LeBron coast to coast badge that only LeBron can use. Now, judging by the description on the PS3 and 360 version, the badge basically boosts his handles, his speed, his quick quickness and his finishing when he's starting a fast break which i gotta say having an exclusive badge when you already a 99 overall is insane like how, like what are we boosting at this point but outside of this though any player can now have up to seven signature skills instead of the five so when you combine that with some of the new badges players start to feel even more unique i don't know about them shooting skills though i don't i don't know that's just hey this is crazy but the last thing i want to talk about is the new points of emphasis system now the system itself is really straightforward and simple you got a slide for offense a slide for defense Defense and a flex slot, which pretty much just lets you pick an additional offensive Not or bad. defensive option. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. for example, if I match up against a certain team and I want to send a double team towards a certain player while limiting shots inside, I can just select key in on score for the defensive setting and in the flex setting, I can put nothing inside. Now, for offense, like there's no point in really picking a pick and roll or get shooters open settings if you're just going to set up your own half court offense and call screens anyway. Regardless, most of the settings really do work and I do find myself using them. Yeah, not bad. Wow, my career. This version of my career marks the first time in the series where we really get like a whole story with cutscenes and voice acting and everything. But not yeah. only that, but the my player customization is a lot better as well. The faces look a little bit more unique. Um, this is my my player. He's a random preset I found. I looked at him. I said, "That's great value, Kawhi, right there." And then I proceeded <laughs> to name him Kale Lettuce. In terms of builds, once again, <laughs> you just kind of pick you. a general play style and call it a day. For example, I went with an athletic six-seven point guard, but the other options are just stuff like scoring as six, first seven stuff point. Like that. As for the actual story of the mode, it's centered around your my player, his agent, and Jackson Ellis. The mode starts off with you practicing and whatnot. Your agent comes through. He tells you, "Hey, you got an invite to the rookie showcase. You go on your way there. You bump uh, into Jackson Ellis, and uh, then." game time and then from there how good or bad you do will determine how high or low you get drafted per usual so after you complete the game you do a little personality test you do some interviews then you get drafted and throughout this entire process you just get like small cutscenes of you and your agent kind of interacting with one another and uh yeah it's he's like wearing Tim's time. with no <laughs> socks. He's raw dog in a pair of Tim's. Can we fire him, please? Like, is this not crazy? But after getting drafted and whatnot, you actually don't play for two straight games. You get no playing time. They talking about you on social media. Yeah, my player starts tweaking out. And it's not until the third game where the starter gets an injury that you actually get a chance to play. I'm not gonna lie. It's not like a really big plot going on here. It's kind of more of like a day in the life with your mom player due to the fact that you just only kind of get a couple cutscenes of them interacting with with the team, the GM, Jackson Ellis here and there. It's, yeah. it's nothing too crazy. Interestingly enough, VC exists in this game offline. Usually it's only skill points. Unfortunately, you still can't buy no accessories offline, but the upgrades themselves hmm. don't cost a lot. So the grind to make a good player offline is actually kind of cool. But now that I've explained my career for the most part, I, I, I need to explain what I'm going through because I'm getting hold. First of all, look at my my player. This is Come like the on. third time. You see I'm that move, man? Look at that move this guy just did. 
to explain what I'm going through because I'm getting hold. First of all, Come look on. at my, my player. Can't even this is do like that. the third time my, my player done got rookie haze. But in terms of the actual team that I play on, I'm in a horrible situation. They got two other point guards. I made a point guard. They got me at shooting guard. The floor spacing is cooked. We got Paul Millsap at small forward. Why is Mike oh Scott standing at the three point line with a 53 ball? We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Last but not least, this was the first year the park was ever introduced as well. I ain't really play it. But from what I can tell, it's no affiliations, ain't no rep. You get a f I don't think nobody ever really got a chance to like really play the park when the game first came out because like Xbox was so bad when it first came out. That was the Xbox One, I believe, and the online for it, the it, it, everything about it was just so bad. <laughs> it was a terrible time. Fit. But you had a really fun game in 2K24. Up 2K14, not 24. Definitely not 24. You load up your hoop. That's it. It's just pure ethical hoops. The biggest downside of this year's version of my team was the fact that there was no player market or no auction house. The main way to get players was to rip packs. And every team had their own pack. So if you want a LeBron, you have to rip heat packs. If your luck suck, you just have to keep opening up heat packs over and over and over until you finally get LeBron. I could have just bought him in 2K13. Like I literally just could have bought him out the player market. But speaking of VC, not only does that currency exist in this mode, there's also MT now, aka my team points. And really the main way to earn my team yeah. points is by selling the same cards you get in packs, which you could buy packs with VC or MT. But if you were to sell the card at whatever 2K price it at, at the moment, you would only receive MT back. And of course, you'll get some MT whenever you play a game online. Now, the biggest new feature that they added this year were collections. The whole mode is based around it. It's the main thing you look at, just sitting idly in the menus. The more collections you complete, the more you build towards different rewards, stuff like that. Tournaments, which rewarded you with exclusive cards. Domination debuted this year too, and Locker Code started to roll out this year, giving out free packs, Ooh. MT, and limited edition cards like Dom and Kobe. So yeah, yeah. the jump in content going from 2K13 to 2K14, excellent but not being able to buy players on your own is not excellent also i can't forget to mention this there was a duplication glitch so you could just load up into a game and you going against 85 86 jordan 90 91 jordan 95 96 jordan just all in a start lineup i don't yeah. remember how long people were running dupes like this but they did patch it out thankfully they did NBA 2K14 is one of the most iconic entries in this series, if not the most iconic outside of 2K11. The game isn't perfect, but even then so many parts of this game still holds up to this day. But coming back and doing fantasy drafts and just playing the regular play now mode, excellent gaming. But the one thing that would make this better is if virtual Mike Budenhoser would stop torturing me with these rotations. <laughs> yeah um I, I mean i'll be honest you'll never get that game again and i'm fine with that because it's just it's just an iconic game that's what he's trying to say the, the, the game is iconic you'll never you're never gonna get that type of nba 2k game again if you it, it hopefully one day they might just like remaster it <laughs> how they remaster all these other games like imagine if 2k just like remastered nba 2k 14 that would make them so much money like how money hungry they are with with 2k all they have to do is make a remaster for 2k14 and they'll sell like crazy people will have that there'll be the pre-orders would be insane